Well, from the streets of Auckland to the bright lights of London, it's been an amazing journey for our next guest. She smashed the competition to make hers the winning Olympic song, which will provide the soundtrack for our Olympic athletes. Joining us now is busker Sam RB and her producer, Mike Chan. Hey busker, so you're a bit more than a busker now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I think you are. <laughs> yeah. Mike, can you tell us about the Olympic songwriting competition? Well, the Olympic Games Committee wanted to have a song for the Games, mm -hmm. and they'd seen it in Europe songs become embedded with big sporting events and teams. New Zealand's always been a bit lazy. They've always just gone for some old pop song. <laughs> and I'd always felt that, you know, you could bring in a Dobbin song or a dance exponent song and sort of squeeze it into that because the people who make those decisions used to like them as a hit. Yep. Mm. But they've got nothing to do with the event. And so Terry Daly at the Olympic Committee said, we, we want to find a song. and. Play It Strange, which is my world, finds new songs written by just people that live down suburban streets. Yeah. They're unknown. The songs have never been heard before. In fact, these were all written for the Olympic Games. And so it was great to see them all come pouring in. How many did you get? About 102. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amazing. From the, from the original. entire country. All original, written for the 2012 Olympic Games. And, and it was just magnificent. The, the quality of the songwriting was amazing. And Sam rose to the top. But there's still an album, so there's an actual album that the team take. Um, which so what's is on free. that album? That's a whole bunch of them. Yeah. Ah. Are, this is the album that was voted in the final stages. There are ten songs, which the team take. Uh, but Sam is the official song of the Games, and she'll be performing it at the Governor General's big dinner in London. Oh, and and at, the end of, at the end of our show yeah. as well today. Yeah. 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 Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Just, just before we get to Sam, what was the judging criteria? What were you looking for in that song? How long is the piece of string? Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, the thing about a song is that it's, we all know through having lived life that it, you can't just instantly know how you'll feel about a song when you hear 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. You've got to hear the whole song. It's like showing someone a painting, saying, well, here's the left-hand side of it. What do you think of that painting? So there have been times in the, in the media here in New Zealand where people have been played little bits here and there and they all go, oh, I don't know, I don't think I like it, but it's all bullshit, really. So what is most important is that now what is happening is that people are hearing the song, radio stations are starting to play the entire song, and the feedback is profoundly good. Yay. So what made that decision? People listened to the song and liked it. It's as simple as that. Sam, how did you come up with this song? Um, initially it was... Uh, just an opportunity to write a song. To be honest, I saw the post on the Play It Strange Facebook page and I thought, I write songs, maybe I could write an anthem. Mm. And that's where it started, but it's, you know, it's become a lot more than that, obviously. I bet yeah. it's now your baby. It how, is. how long did it, it take you to write it? Um, well, really, it was actually really easy to write and I wasn't going to submit the song for that reason because I thought a good song needed a lot more effort. But it just, it just happened quite naturally and, and you know, cool. <laughs> what, how, what were you doing before, before this whirlwind series of events has swept you <laughs> up and away? A lot of people are talking about you as being a busker. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do a lot of busking on Queen Street. Mm -hmm. um, I would play a lot of markets. And I do other gigs as well, um, some, some corporate gigs and, and private events, but I um, try to get out busking you know, a good two, three times a week. Mike, what did you see in this particular song that, that you just thought, yes, this is the one? Well, it avoided all the clichés. So if you'd, if you'd gone to an advertising agency and said, we'll get, can you get one of your jingle writers to write the, the song of the games, you'd have Black, ATRO, Long White Cloud, yeah. uh, Go, 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 Finishing Line, Last Minute, Thrust, or something weird. <laughs> but actually there are two lines in Sam's chorus. Uh, you stand above, you stand beyond, which are... Words that often, well, especially beyond, don't crop up in songs, but they say so much. And I think people are hearing the song and bringing their own image to it. Mm -hmm. So it's, they're not being told what to think when they hear the song, as tends to be in an advertising world. This is a subtle but very powerful song, and I think people are adopting it, adapting it and adopting it to their own emotional connection. What was it like when you found out you won, Sam? Oh, it was pretty special. Yeah. yeah. It's um, obviously a huge... Um, privilege and honour, but it's quite surreal as well. I bet. Because yeah. how are things changing? I know you're off to London. What, yeah. What's going to happen when you get there? I'm hoping to get some gigs there. Go, going over earlier, try mm -hmm. and get some gigs, have a look around, um, meet some of the people, play some music, and then I've got the um, Olympic um, gig, or the New Zealand Olympic event, 
um, kind of near the end of, of July. Mike, what do you say to people that, because, you, you know, the traditional song that we would expect, as you say, a PR kind of song would be uplifting, really banging, you know, get everybody in the spirit, everybody would be singing the lyrics. You've totally flipped that on its head and gone for something very different. But I don't think so in terms of that side of it. So in my mind, it is very much a song suited to a, a choir or a crowd, mm. a, a chanting mob, really. Yeah. A bit like in, in Europe with uh, You'll Never Walk Alone at the Liverpool Football Club. If, if, if Liverpool said, we're going to be looking for our song, and someone said, OK, there's an American musical, I don't know what it is, and here's the song called Never Walk Alone, they, you know, you could have gone out into the street and they would have said, oh, what's that all about? But in actual fact, it is a choral song. It's about people singing together. And stand tall in my mind, we're going out to Fairburn School on Friday the school, the primary school kids are all going to sing that song with it and that will be a true indication of the power of that song. Magnificent. Well, we really want to hear the song. Stick around, Sam will be performing New Zealand's stand-up anthem next. But now we are standing tall behind Sam RB and her winning Olympic song. Take it away, Sam. Through sweat, blood and tears You followed your dream Remember 